Okay, so I'm going to talk about a numerical method today. It uh, probably won't take the full class, but takes however long it takes. Um, this method is called Euler's method. So something we have to understand if we're going to use differential equations as a tool is that the vast majority of differential equations not only cannot be solved by hand, but they don't even have closed form solutions. When I say a closed form solution, I mean a solution we can write down in a finite amount of time using the standard functions. So, excuse me for a moment while I close this door. So the vast majority of differential equations cannot be solved the way the textbooks talk about solving them. And that's why, I mean, if you compare uh, the sections in the textbook to the sections I go over, it's why I've cut so much out. There's all this material on solving differential equations that never works when it's applied to any kind of real-world problem. So what do we do in the real world? Well, if we can't get it exactly, we have to approximate it numerically. And that's Euler's method. And also a rich field of other methods, but Euler's method is the one we'll talk about. So Euler's method is long in the tooth by now, but it's still used today. I mean, sometimes, you know, in, a, in an undergraduate math class, you get taught, you know, stuff that no one really uses anymore just because it's simple and the stuff that's replaced it is complicated. That's not true here. Euler's method still gets used in, you know, published work. So even though there are sort of improvements on it and more complicated iterations of it, it really is a very important idea. And Euler's method is based on linear approximations from a calculus. So in calculus, we have the idea that if we have a function, a curve, and we have a point on the curve, and we look at the tangent line going through the point, then if we just look at what happens near the point, like if we look at what happens around here, the curve and the tangent line are similar looking. And we can use the tangent line to approximate the curve. So here is how Euler's method wherein a one-dimensional case, I mean, this all generalizes, but we're given some differential equation, dy dx equals something involving x 
and y. And here, again, this f of x comma y notation can be kind of confusing because it makes it look like x and y are doing the same thing. But here, y is the equation, y is what we're looking for, and x is the variable. So let's say we have this curve. And we don't know that that is the curve we have. I mean, this is the curve we're looking for. This is the curve Y. Sorry for the hot pink but I'm going to kind of draw over this. When solving differential equations, we'll be given, in general, some kind of initial value. I mean, you need an initial value to make the solution you would need. So, you'll know some point on y, but again, that point is the only point we know. The rest of this curve is hidden from us. It's what we're trying to figure out. So here's where linearization from calculus comes in. To linearize, you need two things. You need a point, got that, and we need the derivative. And we can figure the derivative out because we're given a point, dy dx equals f, of a comma b. So we know a point and we know a derivative. And we can linearize. Now, this linearization seems like an okay approximation near the point. But you see, you know, as we get far away from the point, the difference between the straight line we're using as an approximation and the curve, the real curve that we're trying to find, becomes really pronounced. So in calculus, it's just, we just tell students, well, you can do linearization and we get an approximation and it's only any good near the point. So Euler's um, epiphany, I'm assuming that this was invented by the mathematician it was named after, which is not always a safe assumption, but someone's epiphany was to say, okay, well, this approximation is okay for a while, though. I mean, it eventually stops being any good. But on a small interval, it's okay. Um, I intentionally made that interval a little long, just so that I I'm not trying with this pen to do fine, you know, stroke work in here. I mean, in, the, in real life, I'd say, up until about that interval. This approximation is good and the curves look similar. But again, just to make this easy for students to see what's happening, let's use a longer interval. 
So here, remember that this um, this lie is our attempt to approximate this curve. So here's where we think we are at the end of the interval. We're actually not, we're actually up here. But here's where we think we are. Let's call this Let's modify our notation a bit. Instead of A comma B, let's use A sub zero, B sub zero. <clears throat> and now we have this new point, A sub one, B sub one. It's not on the curve, but we think it is, essentially. And now we're done with this linearization. It uh, worked for a certain amount of time, but at this point, our linearization is no longer accurate. And we're going to create a new linearization. How are we going to create the new linearization? Well, we're going to take this point, a sub one comma b sub one, and we're going to stick it into the derivative to get the slope of a tangent line. And now that we have um, a point and a slope, we can linearize again. However, because the point we're using is wrong, when we linearize, I mean, what we'd like to do is find another tangent line like that. We'd like to find a line that's tangent to the curve, but because we've got this wrong point, we're down here instead of up here. When we linearize, we're going to get something like that. So our approximation of the curve is clearly better using these two linearizations than it was just using the tangent line. When we did the calculus thing and just found the tangent line, We got that as our approximation. And that approximation breaks down pretty quickly. Using the idea that we can linearize more than once, we've now got this as our approximation. And clearly that's doing a better job of following the shape of the curve than the tangent line was. So this is Euler's method. We have a curve We have a point on the curve. Right. This interval up. 
then linearize on the first interval. We'll get a curve that looks like this. Now take this point here, plug it into the derivative, dy dx equals f of x comma y. And now we have a point, this point here, and we have a derivative, so we can linearize again. And we get maybe something that looks like that. Now take this point here, stick it in to the derivative formula. Once we've stuck it into the derivative formula, we'll have a point and a derivative, which is all we need to linearize. We perform the linearization and we get a point that maybe looks like that. Or rather a line segment. But now we have that point. Stick it into this formula to get a derivative. Once we have a point and a derivative, we can linearize we'll get something that maybe looks like this. And eventually, because we're doing all of these approximations, eventually errors will add up and our approximating curve will stop being any good. But this method, Assuming that we make these intervals sufficiently small, this method will give really good approximations. In most circumstances, and assuming that you're not trying to go too far away from the initial value. So trying to do this um, like on Desmos or something would be a pain. Okay, so let's look at an example of Euler's method. Here's a differential equation. It's not written dy dx equals something, but it can be rewritten in that form. Um, so this is one of these equations that we could learn to solve if we wanted to spend a week on it, but then it would, we'd never really have any application for it. But I picked an equation that we can solve just so that we know what our target is here. Here's the exact solution. Now we'll use Euler's method and we'll start by letting our step size be h equals one. And our step size is the width of these intervals. So we have our initial condition. We perform Euler's method by hand, one of the less edifying uh, parts of a differential equations class, but I will put on the white 
four to know all the form of the set stuff. But for now, let me just say that when we perform Euler's method, this is what we get. So not uh, not a great looking approximation, but also one was a very large step size. I mean, we're going from zero to four here. So one was a fourth of the entire interval we're looking at. Let's see what happens with a smaller step size, with a step size of 0 0.5. Hmm. I'm not sure I should have kept both the curves, it's maybe sort of a distraction. But the new curve we get with the Euler's method is this curve that goes horizontally across, then down here, down here. And you see that compared to the step size of one, the step size of one half is giving you what looks like a decent approximation. I mean, there are definitely places where it falls down. Like up here, we have this horizontal line segment. That's not doing a great job of approximating the curve, and it takes the curve a while to kind of recover from that. So here, I let h be 0 0.1. And now the curve we get from Euler's method, I'm calling it a curve. It's really a segment of straight, a series of straight line segments. But these straight line segments are now doing a very good job of tracking the general location of this curve. And if we wanted to let h be even smaller, the approximation would be even better. So Euler's method, as we see here, can give us really good approximation. And for some, if they're using something like um, Mathematica or MATLAB, I mean, you can let H be significantly smaller than this. Like, probably there's no reason H should be bigger than 0 0.01 at a maximum. So that's how. Euler's method works. As I say, um, actually doing this by hand is not, uh, not fascinating, but, but it's hard to know like what, what homework and stuff you should give that utilizes this. I mean, the ideal would be that students have access to something like MATLAB and um, could then do applied problems, but the licensing fee is absolutely outrageous. So we don't do that here. So, in theory, the way Euler's method works is that it breaks this up into intervals, and on each interval, we get a straight line segment. That's the picture we showed here. In reality, how Euler's method works is that we don't worry about the line segments. We just, uh, we just find points 
And then once we found all of the points, we can connect them together. But going with the theory that we're interested in the line segments on the interval from x sub k to x sub k plus one. And let me make sure we have written down what the situation is. F is giving us the derivative. Y of X is approximated as Y sub K plus F of X sub K comma Y sub K times X minus X sub K. And again, all this is, is the linearization from calculus. We have x sub k, we have, well, we don't really have y sub k, but we have an approximation of y sub k. And then once we have an approximation of a point. We have this x sub k and an approximation of y sub k. What's the linearization? Well, it's y minus the y coordinate of the point equals the derivative. times x minus the x-coordinate of that point. So again, we can put the formula on the board and you can do drills with it or whatever, but I don't want us to lose track of what's actually happening here, which is that we're taking a bunch of linearization. So then, what about x? What about the next interval? Well, for the next interval, you say that x sub k plus one is x sub k plus the step size h and y sub k plus one is y sub k plus h times f of x sub k comma y sub k and then on this new interval, y of x is approximately equal to y sub k plus one plus f of x sub k plus one, y sub k plus one times x minus x k plus one. So that's Euler's method, a bunch of linearizations.
And again, as far as actually using Euler's method, oof, what's really happening in the practice is that you're getting a bunch of points. You get x sub k plus one comma y sub k plus one. You get x sub k plus two comma y sub k plus two. You get x sub k plus three comma y sub k plus three. You know, you get the point. And then you just tell MATLAB or Mathematica or whatever, okay, we're going to create a function by connecting those points together. Questions so far? Good. Then I just, I really just have a few comments. I think textbooks do a very bad job of discussing the realities of differential equations and numerical approximations. And I think going back a class, I think the same thing in Calculus 2 about integrals. Like in Calculus 2, you spend all of this time learning to take integrals by hand, and then there's one section where they dump Simpson's rule and the trapezoidal rule and all of that stuff. And the implication seems to kind of be, well, if nothing else works, you can use numerical approximation, I guess. It's, um, and sort of the same thing here. The textbook spends so much time talking about solving differential equations by hand. And then at the very end, now if nothing else works, you can use Euler's method, I guess. Um, but, you know, this question is sort of provocatively framed. Um, People use Euler's method all the time and, and stuff like Euler's method. When they're doing calculus, people use Simpson's rule all the time. The obsession with getting the most perfectly exact answer possible and any error means you failed in some way is a very, a very undergraduate textbook way of thinking about this material. Because, I mean, let's think back. What, I mean, what's the problem with Euler's method? Well, I think... that instinctively... People want to say, well, it's only an approximation. It has error in it. And you don't want to have error, do you? You don't want to only have an approximation. It would be better if you could solve the thing perfectly by hand, and then you wouldn't have any error. But, I mean, a few things on that. First of all, I mean, all models already have error 
in them. All models have modeling assumptions baked into them that are not perfectly correct. So it's impossible to do differential equations and not have error. That's just something you have to be acclimized to. None of your models are perfectly correct. Even the models from physics, Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling assumes you have a perfect ambient temperature. But actually, as the sun rises and sets, your kitchen's temperature changes a little. So already you have error from the sun rising and setting. So we don't want to be too precious about the error we get from something like Euler's method when every problem we do has error baked into it from the start. Then, even when you can solve a differential equation perfectly, Error is going to creep in. Like, think of that stuff we were doing when we were looking at second order linear homogeneous differential equations. We were getting things that look like this. And you can say, okay, this is an exact solution. It doesn't have any error. But, but okay, I mean, what's this E? E is an infinite decimal. What? Your calculator can't deal with infinite decimals. So when your calculator sees E, it's going to round it to eight decimal faces or nine decimal faces or whatever. So you have this perfect solution that has no error until the moment you actually do anything with it, whereupon you're going to have to round e to some manageable number of decimal places, and suddenly your problem had, or your solution has rounding error in it. So, I mean, obviously we want to be aware of error. We want to try to minimize error, but we can't let it be a, a boogeyman because it's always going to be there. And if we can, if we can really internalize that, then the idea that this is a sort of a vast resort that you use, that it's worse than solving the differential equation because it's only an approximation, because it only has error. We can recognize that as kind of a fallacy. Yes, Euler's method will involve some error, but so will everything else. And I'm sort of speaking passionately about this just from my personal experience as a researcher, where I wasted, I mean, I was working with other people and I ended up wasting so much time trying to program this computer program that would solve a thing perfectly and not have any error in it. And then, I mean, this is 
just weeks completely wasted until it was finally like, what are we doing here? This is, we should be using Euler's method clearly. So Euler's method is one of those things, you know, there are dedicated numerical differential equations courses. This is not one of those outside of a dedicated course. It gets one section, maybe two sections, and then we kind of forget about it as we move on to other material. But I want to champion it a little and say that if I were going to take this different if somebody, you know, told me you have to teach this differential equations course, except that you can only teach one section out of the textbook, this is the section I teach. No contest. So with that, it's a little early, but we are done with Euler's method. And I will see you. No, no, I'm telling a lie. We uh, we have some mandatory thing that all of the department chairs are being dragged to. So I will not see you Thursday. I would instead like you to access the online video and notes and get the material that way. Okay. And I'll post a Canvas announcement to remind you. Yeah, sounds good.